All right, so picture this. You're at SC24, the supercomputing conference, and the energy is palpable. Mm. NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, takes the stage yeah. and unveils a future driven by AI breakthroughs in medicine, climate science. You name it. AI is going to reshape it. So he dove deep into his keynote, and oh. it feels like we're on the brink of a whole new industrial revolution. It's not just hype, either. Huang highlighted that computing costumes have plummeted by a factor of a million since CU Day's debut back in 2006. A million fold. Yeah. That's almost impossible to even fathom. It is. It's not just about speed, either. It's unlocking possibilities that were completely out of reach before. So what does this mean for someone like, say, a cancer researcher? How does that translate to their daily work? Imagine running simulations on your desktop that used to require a massive supercomputing center. That's the magnitude of the leap we're talking about. Wow. It could revolutionize drug discovery, testing thousands of potential compounds in a fraction of the time it used to take. It's like suddenly every researcher has a superpower. Ex and it wasn't just the numbers right. Huang had this really poetic way of describing these supercomputers. He called them computational microscopes, telescopes, even time machines. Yeah, those analogies are powerful because they capture the essence of this technology. Mm. It's not just about processing numbers faster. It's about fundamentally changing how we understand the world and accelerating the pace of discovery. Okay, so we have this incredible power at our fingertips, but how do people actually harness it? Yeah. Wong kept mentioning these CUDA-X libraries, calling them the engines of accelerated computing. Right. What are they in layman's terms? Think of them as specialized software building blocks, each optimized for a specific task. You have CUDNN for deep learning Ku quantum for quantum simulations, right. and hundreds more. It's like having a toolbox filled with pre-made components that you can easily assemble to build incredibly powerful applications. And they just unveiled a new one at SC24, right? Kupi Numeric, something specifically designed for data scientists. Why is this one so special? Is it just about speed again? Speed is definitely a factor, particularly for data scientists dealing with massive data sets. But QP Numeric is a GPU accelerated version of NumPy, which is a fundamental library for scientific computing. Uh, it's like replacing the engine of a race car with a rocket booster. It's going to supercharge those complex calculations and allow data scientists to extract insights much faster. So we're talking about speeding up research simulations, data analysis. But how does this translate into tangible, real-world outcomes? Mm -hmm. Take, for example, the Omniverse blueprint that Huang was highlighting, digital twins in real time. What does that even look like? Imagine a car crash simulated with incredible detail and accuracy or testing a new airplane design without needing to build a physical prototype. Right. The blueprint can accelerate simulations by up to 1,200 times, which means you get results almost instantly. So for companies like Boeing, could they potentially ditch those massive wind tunnels and just conduct all their testing virtually, what impact would that have on their entire design process? It's not quite that simple. But you're right, it would completely revolutionize their workflow. The ability to rapidly test and iterate designs virtually could lead to lighter, more fuel-efficient aircraft developed in a fraction of the time. Okay, so faster planes and safer cars, that's pretty impressive. But then Hrong delved into the world of quantum simulations, something that I admit is still a bit mind-boggling to me. What's all this about CDAQ and why should we even care about quantum simulations in the first place? Well, quantum computers are incredibly difficult and expensive to build. CDAQ allows researchers to run highly detailed simulations of quantum processors on regular computers. Oh, I see. It's like a high-fidelity flight simulator for quantum algorithms, allowing researchers to experiment and iterate quickly without needing a physical quantum computer. So it's a way to get a head start on this whole quantum computing revolution, even though the hardware isn't quite there yet. But what's the ultimate goal? What kind of real-world breakthroughs could quantum computing lead to? The potential is vast, but still largely theoretical. Think about new materials with unprecedented properties, drugs designed with pinpoint accuracy or AI systems, far more powerful than anything we have today. We're talking about unlocking solutions to some of humanity's most complex problems. It all sounds very sci-fi, but incredibly exciting. Let's bring it back down to earth a bit and talk about healthcare. Huang talked about BioNemo, a framework specifically designed for pharmaceutical research. What makes it so special? BioNemo is all about applying AI to accelerate drug discovery. It's a collection of pre-trained AI models and tools that can analyze massive data sets of biological information, identify potential drug targets, and predict how drugs will interact with the human body. 
Think about it this way. Instead of blindly testing thousands of compounds, BioNemo uses AI to pinpoint the most promising candidates, potentially saving years of research and millions of dollars. And it's all powered by NVIDIA's hardware and software. Yeah. So it's not just the algorithms. It's about having the computing power to actually utilize them. Mm. But is it truly making a difference? Are we seeing any tangible real-world impact from this yet? Absolutely. One of the most impressive examples is DiffDoc 2.0, a tool that predicts how drugs bind to proteins. It's six times faster than its predecessor thanks to a new library called QCovariants. Okay, I understand that faster is generally better. But why is speed so crucial in drug discovery? What does it actually mean for getting treatments to patients? It's all about scale. Researchers need to analyze millions, even billions of potential drug candidates to identify the ones that are most likely to be effective and safe. The faster they can do this, the faster they can get new treatments to patients who desperately need them. In the case of DiffDoc 2.0, that speed could be the difference between finding a life-saving treatment in years versus decades. So we're talking about potentially shaving years off the drug development process. Uh -huh. That's huge. Yeah. But it's not just about drugs. Right. NVIDIA is also working on some pretty remarkable things in material science. I was particularly intrigued by the Alchemy NIM microservice. It sounds almost magical. It's pretty close. Yeah. Alchemy NIM utilizes generative AI to design new materials with specific properties. Let's say you need a super strong, lightweight material for, say, building a spacecraft capable of withstanding the rigors of interstellar travel. Now you're talking. That's the kind of future I want to live in. Well, with Alchemy NIM, you could simply tell the AI what properties you need, and it will generate thousands of potential candidates. Then it analyzes those candidates and determines which ones are most likely to be stable and viable. Imagine designing a material with the strength of steel, but the weight of a feather all on a computer. That's mind-blowing. So instead of spending years in a lab mixing and testing different materials, we can let AI handle the heavy lifting. But how does that translate to real-world applications? Is this something that's already being utilized in industries today? It's still in the early stages, but the potential is enormous. Think about lighter, more fuel-efficient cars, more durable and sustainable building materials, or even fabrics that can adapt to different temperatures. It's not just about creating cool new things. It's about solving real-world problems in a more efficient and sustainable way. Okay, so we've talked about accelerating research, designing new materials, and revolutionizing drug discovery. But what about something that's impacting us right now? Climate change. Huang announced two new microservices, Cordifni and Forecast Net and I'm, which are designed to speed up climate modeling by as much as 500 times. Why is that so crucial right now, especially with the extreme weather events we've been witnessing lately? These microservices are a game changer for climate scientists. They're part of NVIDIA's Earth2 platform, which is a digital twin of our planet. Wow. With these tools, researchers can run incredibly detailed and accurate climate simulations, which is essential for understanding how our planet is changing and predicting future climate events. So instead of simply reacting to climate disasters after they occur, we can use these simulations to anticipate and prepare for them. Precisely. With Cordif NEMIM and ForecastNet NIM, scientists can study the complex interplay of factors driving climate change, allowing them to predict the impact of extreme weather events with much greater accuracy. This could help us develop better mitigation strategies, improve early warning systems, and ultimately save lives and resources. It's like having a crystal ball for the planet, but one powered by AI and supercomputing. All of this advanced technology requires some serious computing power, right? Where's all that coming from? That's where NVIDIA's partnership with Foxconn comes in. They're building new production facilities in the U.S., Mexico, and Taiwan to meet the escalating demand for AI and supercomputing power. So it's not just about the software and algorithms. It's about having the physical infrastructure to support this entire AI revolution. But what about the hardware itself? What's the latest and greatest from NVIDIA? Well, they just announced the general availability of the H200 NVL, a powerhouse GPU based on their Hopper architecture. It's significantly faster for both AI and high-performance computing applications. So this is the engine that's going to power all these amazing breakthroughs we've been discussing. But I believe you mentioned something even more powerful on the horizon, right? The GB200 Grace Blackwell Superchip. That's right. The GB200 is NVIDIA's next-generation superchip scheduled to arrive in 2025. It combines four powerful Blackwell GPUs with two Grace CPUs, all interconnected with their high-speed NVLink C2C technology. So this is like the ultimate weapon for researchers and businesses looking to push the boundaries of AI and supercomputing. 
What kind of performance are we talking about here? Early benchmarks indicate that it could be twice as powerful as its predecessor for scientific computing training and inference applications. It's like taking a giant leap forward in processing power, opening up even more possibilities for scientific discovery and technological innovation. Wow, I need a moment to process all of that. This keynote was like a whirlwind tour of the future, mm. and I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the possibilities. It's incredible to think about how much progress has been made in just a few short years, and it's even more exciting to imagine what the future holds. It's definitely a lot to take in, but the key takeaway is that we're living through a truly transformative period in human history. The convergence of AI, supercomputing, and simulation is creating unprecedented opportunities across virtually every field imaginable. It's both exhilarating and a little bit daunting to think about the scale of change that's happening. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be a fascinating journey. It certainly will be. Yeah, it really is. And it seems like every day there are these new breakthroughs and possibilities popping up. And it's not just about raw power. Mm -hmm. It's about how this technology is actually being applied to tackle real world problems. That's what's truly exciting. Exactly. Like, remember when Huang showed off James and Vidya's digital human? Oh, yeah. That wasn't just some tech demo. Yeah. It was a glimpse into a future where AI is becoming more human-like and interactive. Yeah, James is a perfect example of how AI is moving beyond just crunching numbers. It can actually understand and respond to natural language, right. making real-time conversations possible. You can easily envision a future where digital humans are used in all sorts of roles, from customer service representatives to virtual therapists. Oh, absolutely. I can totally see it. Walking into a store and being greeted by this friendly digital human who can answer all your questions and help you find what you need. Exactly. But speaking of mind-blowing demos, how about that real-time interactive wind tunnel Huang showed off that was straight out of a sci-fi movie? Yeah, that was a really powerful demonstration of the Omniverse platform's capabilities. You know, yeah. traditionally, wind tunnel testing was a really time-consuming and expensive process. Oh, yeah. But with this new technology, engineers can test different designs virtually and get instant feedback on how they'll perform under different conditions. So instead of building these expensive physical prototypes, they can test everything in a virtual environment. Exactly. That's got to be a complete game-changer for industries like aerospace and automotive design. Oh, absolutely. It allows for much faster iteration and optimization, which ultimately leads to more efficient and innovative products. Imagine a world where you can test and refine new aircraft designs in just a matter of days wow. instead of months or even years. That's incredible. Yeah. But, you know, for all this talk about democratizing AI, it still feels pretty daunting to me, and I'm sure many of our listeners probably feel the same way. Sure. Where do you even begin if you want to start exploring these tools and technologies? I understand that even for someone in the field, it's a lot to keep up with. The good news is that NVIDIA is really committed to making these tools more accessible to a wider audience. They offer a ton of online resources, training programs, and developer communities right. to help people get started regardless of their technical background. That's really encouraging to hear. It's like they're building this bridge between the world of experts and the rest of us who are just starting to explore these technologies. Precisely. They recognize that the true power of AI lies in its ability to empower everyone, not just a select few. The more people who have access to these tools, the more innovation we're going to see. So what's your advice for someone who's maybe feeling a little overwhelmed but wants to dip their toes into the world of AI? Where should they start? Hmm. I'd recommend starting with something that genuinely interests you. Are you passionate about healthcare? Okay. Then check out BioNemo and see how AI is being used in drug discovery. Are you fascinated by climate change? Dive into Earth, too, and explore how AI is being used to model and predict climate events. The key is to find a point of entry that sparks your curiosity. Right. And then just follow that thread. That's great advice. It's like instead of trying to learn everything all at once, just focus on one area that you're excited about and let that be your gateway into the broader world of AI. Exactly. And don't be afraid to experiment and get your hands dirty. Yeah. There are so many free online resources and tutorials available. You can start building your own AI models and applications without needing a PhD in computer science. So for our listener out there who might be feeling a little intimidated by all of this, just remember, you don't have to be an expert to start exploring the world of AI. There are plenty of resources available, and the best way to learn is 
by doing. Absolutely. The AI community is incredibly welcoming and supportive. There are countless online forums, communities, and meetups where you can connect with other enthusiasts, ask questions, and share your work. It's really great to hear. It's like this whole AI revolution is being driven not just by cutting edge technology, yeah. but also by a spirit of collaboration and a desire to share knowledge and empower others. That's a great observation. Yeah. And that spirit of collaboration is absolutely essential if we want to ensure that AI is developed and used responsibly and for the benefit of all humankind. Absolutely. Like it's her. not just about the technology itself. Yeah. It's about the people behind it and how we choose to use this incredible power. Hmm. But I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. And it's time to start wrapping things up. Yeah. What are some key takeaways you want our listeners to walk away with? I think the biggest takeaway is that we're living through a truly transformative period in human history. The convergence of AI supercomputing and simulation is creating unprecedented opportunities for innovation and progress across virtually every field imaginable. It's like we're standing at the edge of this new era and it's both exhilarating and a little bit daunting. It's true. But I'm optimistic that if we approach these technologies with a sense of responsibility and a commitment to using them for good, we can create a future that benefits all of humanity. You know, it's amazing to think that all of this all stemmed from one keynote. I know, right? And it wasn't just about product announcements. It was really a vision of the future. Mm. So if this is just the beginning, what's next? I mean, we've only just scratched the surface of what's possible with AI, supercomputing, and simulation. Well, that's what's so exciting about it, right? It's like we've boarded this train of innovation that's constantly accelerating, and who knows where it's going to take us. What seemed like science fiction just a few years ago is becoming reality. So what seems impossible now that might actually become reality in the future, what are you most excited about? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, self-driving cars once felt like a distant dream, and now look, they're here. I know, it's crazy. For me, it's that intersection of AI and biology that really captures my imagination. You know, we touched on drug discovery, mm -hmm. but I can't help but think about the potential for personalized medicine gene editing. Right. Even what you mentioned earlier, synthetic biology. Yeah. Feels like we're on the cusp of unlocking some of the most fundamental secrets of life itself. Yeah. It's a field with so much potential, but also one that requires careful consideration. Imagine designing and engineering biological systems that don't even exist in nature. Right. Cells that are programmed to clean up pollution, produce biofuels, or even repair damaged tissue. Now, that's the kind of sci-fi future I can get behind. Hmm. But it sounds incredibly complex. It is. What role does AI play in all of this? AI is crucial. Mm. It's the tool that allows us to analyze these intricate biological systems, mm. design new biological components, and maybe even automate the entire engineering process. Just imagine AI could help us design treatments that are tailored to your unique genetic makeup or even develop entirely new organisms to tackle environmental challenges. It's both fascinating and a little bit frightening to think about. You're right. It is. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of all these breakthroughs. Yeah. But we can't forget about the ethical implications. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about designing new forms of life, we need to tread very carefully and have a lot of thoughtful discussions. Absolutely. This isn't just about pushing the boundaries of technology. It's about shaping the future of humanity. Yeah. And that demands careful consideration of the potential consequences, both good and bad. Very well said. Yeah. It's a good reminder that even though we've covered so much today, this conversation is really just the beginning. Oh, yeah. Just the tip of the iceberg. This is bigger than faster chips and more sophisticated algorithms. It's about how we choose to wield this power, and what kind of future we want to build. And that's the message I hope our listeners take away from this deep dive. If something piqued your interest, don't let it go. Keep exploring. Keep asking questions. Keep pushing the boundaries. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the one making these sci-fi dreams a reality. The future is out there waiting to be discovered. And who knows what incredible things we'll find along the way. So until next time, keep learning, keep questioning, and never lose that sense of wonder. Couldn't have said it better myself.